Welcome back to Virginia. We're about to continue with what is called the final day, although I know from the chapter select menu that that is not the very end of the game, so don't worry. But before we get back into it, I just want to take a look at this map now that we've actually been to some more of these places. So this is an old bison trail, and it goes pretty near the road over here, so this might be around the area that we encountered the bison, perhaps? That's the roadhouse that we just visited. The water tower where I met Maria Halperin after uh, Maria realized that I was kind of working against her. Or at least it looked like I was working against her. There's the observatory where we were checking it out and kind of hid when we heard Lucas's father, the priest, and uh, Donna coming in. There's the old mine that had that hideout in there. And then Maria's pendant was thrown over the fence into the Air Force Base. We also went inside the Air Force Base a little bit. Oh, we've also been to... I think that says diner? I guess that's the diner we've been to. And I think that's it. So, Oh, gas station, of course, where we got the stuff low from. I think that's it. All right, let's jump back in and answer the door. Well, whoopsie. So, what the hell am I locked up for? Do they find out that I trespass? Oh, look who's next to me. It was Maria. Hey. What the hell are they logged up for? As far as I know, we didn't commit any crimes, really. At least none that they know about. Or is that for... Oh, that might be for breaking into the uh, Lucas family house, huh? So am I back on the job, or have I been demoted, or what? Man really likes gambling, I guess? Thank you. 
impressed I've taken Cord's place. I don't entirely understand what Ann Tarver was being tasked with, though. So she met all these people, uh, all these co-workers, and I guess Cord was doing internal investigations on all of them? So I guess Anne just kind of quote-unquote made friends with whoever they were tasked to make friends with to investigate them, you know, become their, their buddies or their co-workers or something, and then rat them out. But what exactly did they do? Did they do anything? I mean, judging by the ridiculous case file on Judith Ortega, it seems like I wouldn't exactly expect that there was anything that they, these people were actually doing wrong. It might have just been all bullshit, but what exactly were I, was I reporting them for and getting them fired for? I wouldn't be surprised if it was for nothing, but I mean, all of them? For nothing? For what? Do they all do unconventional means to their detectivery or something? I mean, what the hell? I still got that piece of the key, or whatever that is. Unsolved missing person. Never solved the Lucas case, huh? So that's a tab of either acid or just some sort of experimental drug that perhaps Judith Ortega was developing or something? Obviously there's more to it than just I'm taking drugs, <laughs> so I'm on a drug trip. Because <laughs> it seems to actually alter reality. That's what that is. Huh. But where did I find that? Right, didn't that come from Lucas? Wasn't it in Lucas's journal or something? It fell out of it, or... Or was it in that... Wallet of that... Other person? The asshole that uh, threw... Maria's pendant over the... Air Force base fence? 
it came from either him or from Lucas's journal or something like that. So why did they have that drug? Why did I take a piece of it, put it in a piece of paper? Why did I then apparently give it to Maria, who then gave it back to me later? I... what? I wonder if this drug is what caused Lucas's disappearance, though.
Wait, was I just playing as that character in the seat, or are they just also making a, sh a ship? <laughs> what is going on? seem to see me. I think I'm still... I still look like Ann Tarver. have to eat one pea at a time. Is this is how monotonous our life is now.
didn't want to interrupt the dramatic flow that was happening, but who wow, a lot just happened, huh? Um, so it looks like we were somehow having, uh, I guess, visions of some of, like we were getting special insight into some of the things that had happened. Because we saw quite a few instances where we were seeing particular people like the priest with Donna, and Lucas took a picture of that apparently, and and uh, the mayor and the photo booth and a bunch of other things, but they obviously didn't actually see us. And also the, like, Air Force person or general or something in his office with uh, the ship where he broke a piece off of it. They obviously didn't see us. We were like some observer, somehow able to, I guess, affect things, but they couldn't see us. I don't really know what to make of that. I guess now we know that the priest is suspect number one. I... <laughs> beyond that, though, I'm not sure. I think there was some sort of kind of heavy-handed symbolism with the, the mask being, like, representing their old self or something, and they were, like, dropping the mask. I don't know. I'm not quite sure what that meant, but I'm pretty sure it was pretty heavy-handed. Beyond that, I'm mostly just a bit confused. Oh, yeah, and this must be uh, Maria Halpern's um, husband, I guess, the person they were married to. When we were in their house, there was no one else here, but this medical equipment was here, so this must be a, a bit before.
phones are gone that were here. Okay, just to pause for a second. So that was, um, that was Lucas with their guitar case. So I guess we changed the timeline. We went back in time and decided to do things differently. Lucas was alive in this timeline and me and Halperin are fine. And what? Huh? <laughs> okay, I heard it was mystifying. No kidding. I think I was on board the Virginia train for the first two episodes, the first two thirds, but this last part, uh, bah. I feel very lost. I guess, should I resume? Maybe there's a scene after the credits or something. Let's resume. I'll uh, join you after the credits. Hello, this is me from the future. It turns out the credit sequence was much longer than I expected, so I'm actually just gonna go ahead and talk over it a bit. Hope you don't mind. There is no sequence after the credits, by the way. So, just to talk a bit about my impressions of Virginia, I really liked it in a lot of ways, but it definitely has some problems. I want to talk about something that's probably gonna sound kind of weird and not relevant to Virginia, but I promise I'll turn it around and it'll have a point. A while ago, I was watching this interview with Stephen Wilson. He's a UK-based musician. And they were talking about David Lynch. David Lynch, of course, being the person behind, amongst many other things, Twin Peaks, which this game is obviously very heavily inspired by and even very directly references it with the whole Roadhouse sequence and all that. And they were talking about David Lynch. And Stephen was mentioning how he's noticed a lot of things being called Lynchian, because David Lynch has a very strong and kind of particular aesthetic and way of making films and TV shows and things like that. It really stands out and it's very... Uh, it stands out a lot, but it's also really hard to define exactly what it is for something to be Lynchian. And Stephen was mentioning how many things are called Lynchian, but he was saying that they just never really compare to the real thing. Something that's Lynchian versus something that David Lynch actually made. Because David's known for uh, a very interesting type of just sort of, I don't know, it's really hard to define. Surrealism, strangeness, fascinatingness, mysterious, just... He has a very particular aesthetic that this game, Virginia, definitely seemed to be sort of going for. And I definitely agree with him that a lot of things that are described as Lynchian just don't measure up to the real thing. Virginia, sadly, included. It's hard to put into words, but there's something about the mystery and the strangeness of a David Lynch production that feels, although baffling and strange and hard to understand without a doubt, it also feels like it's the work of something that's been planned. It feels purposeful, not just weird for the sake of weird. 
This didn't feel like that. This felt more like kind of strange and baffling for the sake of strange and baffling. I didn't feel like there was some some order to it behind the scenes that I just couldn't understand. It just seemed kind of pointlessly confusing. And that's really my main problem with Virginia. That feeling wasn't too strong for the first two thirds. It was, you know, the mystery was a bit, it was a bit strange and a little bit baffling, but I was mostly on board. But then the end, it just it felt like it went off the rails and just tried to do too much. And it didn't give me any time to breathe. And it just like kept hammering with scene and scene and cut after cut after cut. And everything just went so fast. I didn't have any time, any time to actually absorb anything. And now that I've thought about it a little bit, I'm left with the impression that, like I just said, it doesn't feel like the real thing. It tries. It feels like it tries to emulate the real thing, but it feels like it just tries a bit too hard. You know, there's a there's a difference between taking inspiration from something and kind of putting in a cheeky reference every once in a while, and then also having a literal place that's called the Roadhouse, which is exactly the name of the place in Twin Peaks that has a band that's like an exact copy of a band that often plays in Twin Peaks, and it's just like, it tries too hard, and the references are too on the nose, and it's just, you know, if you're gonna compare yourself so much to the real thing, I'm gonna compare you to it, and it just doesn't stack up. It doesn't stack up to it, and it doesn't stand on its own either. So that's kind of my feelings about the overall structure and the story and everything, but, so some good points. Overall, I did quite enjoy it. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous for one it is beautiful it sounds fantastic the soundtrack and all the uh, all the sound effects and fully work and stuff like that was also fantastic so visual wise and sound wise it's very good and i also really appreciate that they actually made strong use of cuts which is something that almost no game really uses at all i noticed in the credits that it said they were inspired by 30 flights of loving and i think that was one of the first games that I know of that kind of, um, I think popularized the idea of using cuts in a game, which is something that, you know, movies and TV shows have used forever. But for some reason, games haven't really used it very much. Other than, of course, in cutscenes, but using cuts in actual, like, while you were playing. It's a great idea, and more games should use it, so I really appreciate that they utilized that. I think that's all my thoughts for Virginia. Despite all the problems I had with it, I still am very glad I played it. It's a really fantastic experience, and I've, I've never played anything quite like it before, so it's always refreshing to see something new and original. Well, I hope you've enjoyed Virginia. Thanks for watching.